Listen, everybody needs a fairy godmother, you know? Just somebody to look out for them. Some people call me their fairy smoke mother, others their internet big sister, but you can call me Hannah, the host of Smoke Sash. So come hang out. Let's light up and talk everything there is to life. The good, the bad, the ugly, the embarrassing. I've got a story for it all. Brought to you by cold medicine and a THC drink. Hotties of the world, welcome back to another beautiful episode of Smoke Sash. I'm so excited to be back with you guys again. Um, I am back in my original position. We've officially left my bedroom. I've left my bed. I'm feeling better. As you guys know, I've been getting over an illness and I feel like I just needed some really good sunlight in my face, sit in the sunshine, sunshine, be around my little plants and just enjoy life i'm definitely still in my comfortable cozy era um sweats all the way i'm using this beanie kind of serving gypsy rose right now but i (laughs) mean i'm using this beanie to cover up a giant pimple on my forehead the size of an actual volcano um love accessorizing due to my acne you know how it be but i hope you guys are having a wonderful amazing thursday hope you guys are enjoying this last bit of winter weather that we have for a little bit i cannot wait for it to be warm and sunny outside it's going to be fantastic but we got a lot to catch up on okay first of all as you guys know i've been very sick and i want to talk about unintentional tea breaks i didn't realize how hard they are i feel like intentional tea breaks are way easier because you already have the mindset you're like girl we got to cut back we got to do better um we're working towards something okay but unintentional tea breaks like getting sick and not being able to smoke because you can barely breathe anyways it's the worst it's the absolute worst because you're like i have all this free time on my hands i don't know what to do all i want to do is just like smoke a little bowl put myself into a coma take a nap rest recover recuperate and you just can't you can't do not do not smoke that bowl do not take that dab when you are having a respiratory illness it's gonna make it worse it's going to make it way worse anyways i had a small edible stash left so i went through a few of those edibles um and then i was like fuck so what do we do now what do we do now and i like to you know product taste test some things out so i wanted to share with you guys Um, something that has completely changed the game for me and that is this cannabis infused cocktail i know i know it's fucking incredible i was a little bit first of all it's called nowadays um nowadays cannabis infused low dose zero proof so it's not it doesn't have any alcohol in it an uplifting experience for any occasion so for this particular bottle it is six milligrams of thc per one and a half ounces now a standard drink that you order at the bar is gonna have two ounces of alcohol so i would say maybe there's like eight eight milligrams per two ounces per standard drink that you would make with this with this nowadays cannabis infused alcohol it's not even alcohol i don't know what to call it juice it's fantastic i ordered this wondering what it was going to be like wanting to do a little tester on myself because my dad loves whiskey he loves drinking and i just can't keep up with him and i need a substitution i was like i want to try this i want to see what's up this is amazing it is so good first of all i was like am i really gonna feel anything from it is it really gonna be worth it is it actually gonna get me fucked up Here's the thing, since it's a liquid and it's not like a gummy or chocolate or whatever you usually take your edibles in, your body processes it way faster. I'm talking as fast as a drink. You know how you're sipping on a drink and you get halfway through and you're like, okay, I feel it now. That's how I feel with this. Same way alcohol makes me feel, except it's the effects of THC, which I like way better. Gets me a little bit loosey-goosey have a good time, get a little high, you know the vibes. At first I was like, oh no, this stuff isn't gonna get me high. Eight milligrams, that's not enough, not gonna work. This shit, the way it hits you, it knocks me out completely. It's fantastic, okay? It is so wonderful and such a great thing to have just on hand, especially as like a 
pretty frequent cannabis user and as somebody who hasn't drank for a month or almost a month it's been 30 days so far crazy time flies um it has been such a perfect thing to incorporate in my everyday life um now of course i wanted to get you guys a little code so you can use all caps hannah m 15 get 15 percent out percent off oh my god if you want to try it but it is so yummy first of all it doesn't have that horrible awful um and this is not an ad i'm just like shocked and i had a crazy experience which i'm gonna share after this but so when i can't smoke i need something else um especially if i'm sick like i don't want to smoke so i drink this i make a little cocktail out of it it tastes like sweet tarts okay little sweet little sour almost like a uh, lemon drop esque you can shake it over ice and i top it with just some sparkling water some flavored sparkling water have a little cocktail fantastic fantastic as you can tell the bitch is almost empty okay i'm literally about to order more tonight anyways i have been loving that especially because i'm so ill and i really can't smoke also, my tolerance is lowering, so maybe it's hitting me a little bit harder than it should because when I tell you, I had a little, you know, on the rocks, little glass yesterday. My boyfriend had to go run errands. He was going out to skate, so I was like, okay, I'm going to have a little girls' day, girls' day in. Me and the 18 people that live in my head, we're going to have a little drink, hang out. I got so high. I have not been that high in a while. I have not been that high in so long i'm talking i finally understand why people get high and go to the gym i understand why people are like no i need to basically green out and and go to the gym because then you have no choice but to work out i was sitting here on my couch and i was just like spiraling and i was like i need to do something to distract myself and i got on the floor and started doing crunches what girl what i put on a 35 minute workout video and i did the whole thing i didn't have a choice i was like if i stop doing these crunches right now i'm gonna enter that blackout hellhole that is like greening out and so we just got to keep crunching girl you got to keep working out all of a sudden 35 minutes was up what get it gym bros i get why you eat an edible and then go in there it's like you have no choice but to run on that ellip- elliptical you have no choice but to lift those weights or else you're gonna enter like a spiral mindset We got to distract ourselves. You know what I mean? Anyways, fantastic. Got a 35-minute workout done and I'm sick. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you nowadays. Thank you nowadays. Capital Hannah M15 for 15% off. Anyways, I wanted to share that experience with you guys because really I haven't been having a lot of experiences because I've been so sick. It really has been me just trying to persevere through this illness. Um, Sorry if I still sound stuffy. I'm still getting over it. She just, this illness does not want to leave me. She's like a bad ex-girlfriend. She will not leave me alone and I am ready to move on. Anyways, fantastic yeah working out high who would have thought it'd be such a great time um now i understand shout out to the power lifters not the men the girls love you (laughs) okay anyways let's talk so last episode um the audio episode for the week we talked a little bit about little hot topics you know i think i want to include some more hot topics in these weekly episodes for you guys um (laughs) because i like keeping up with what's going on and let me tell you i got a lot of opinions and i'm sure you guys want to hear it because trust me i understand um last week or not last week on tuesday we talked about um the megan and nikki situation and i listen no sides i really was just looking at it from an astrological perspective and how things are affecting them and higher selves and lower selves and how that works according to astrology um very real i hope you guys can learn from it and (laughs) move forward but i also there was one more piece of like hot topics that i wanted to talk about and that is the austin mcbroom effect okay i don't know if you guys know who austin mcbroom is or Catherine mcbroom or what's oh the ace family they're like family vloggers on youtube who have been known for just like drama filled a little scammy kind of just like 
putting all their stuff out there for the world to see in order to make a couple bucks off of it which hey we all gotta hustle but austin mcbroom is particularly annoying because a he is a serial cheater he has a beautiful loving wife well not anymore had a beautiful loving wife who head over heels for him would do anything for him birth out four beautiful babies for him and he was just a serial cheating 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 everybody knew for like years this man has been cheating on her for forever she needs to leave i don't know if what's happening is a social media ploy there's two ways it can go a he's either losing his mind on social media in order to garner more views and garner sympathy in order to be a successful person outside of this divorce and outside of being a family vlogger um or b this is fake it's all fake the divorce is fake they're not actually breaking up um it's fake one of the two but there is a real effect that happens especially on social media whether you're big or not that is the austin mcbroom effect which is when a man loses a bad bitch he loses his sanity and you know when they're losing their sanity because they will post about 15 instagram stories a day or snapchat stories they'll post like 15 to 30 just woke up making myself a protein shake hitting the gym you know all we can do is our best motivational quote here flexing in the mirror i miss her baby please come back like literally just a slew of social media posts the austin mcbroom effect is real and i know when a man loses a bad bitch because he will be all over social media and you will know he is down bad and that is exactly what's happening such a real phenomenon i remember oh my god my friend talk about the austin mcbroom effect my friend received some of the most unhinged insane photos from men after she broke up with him after she broke up with them in general and it is such a testimony to the austin mcbroom effect men will lose their mind on social media as soon as they lose a bad fucking bitch anyway he was hitting her up post breakup and it's just a picture of him like this one singular tear streaming down his cheek and it's a Snapchat and it just says, hey. And he's just like, hey. Like, how down bad do you have to be to be sending these Snapchats? Men love playing the victim. They really do. Like, sir, all you had to do was not cheat on her 47 times. And maybe you would still have her. But no, no. I'm going to let the whole world know what I just lost by posting a million fucking stories on Instagram and Snapchat and letting everybody know what the fuck I'm going through. I'm going to post a black and white quote on every singular social media page that I have just so that everybody know I'm going through a hard time. Anyways, testimony to if you heard a bad bitch, you will be down bad. He is currently in a RV outside of her house. Yikes. Anyways, enough chit chat let's dive into some of your questions i only got through half of them on tuesday and i want to get through the rest i want to give everybody an opportunity to hang out to have their questions answered also if you don't know where to submit your questions follow me on instagram at hannah marlene um i always post a questionnaire every monday and you can submit there or you can dm me whatever works best for you quite frankly someone said how to let the old you die like you already stepped into a new timeline but yet keep going back to your past selves and things you've already gotten over slash overcame um i don't think you really have to let your old selves die i think you should carry them with you every step you go and honor them every step you go because you know they went through something they did the best they could in that situation all you have to do is really take from it, learn from it, and carry that self with you in order to do better in the next move that you will take, in the next step that you will take into your better future self. Um, like, I don't ever want to lose, of course, like, I don't want to inhibit past qualities that maybe were bad, but I don't ever want to lose that part of myself because I understand what I went through. I overcame and I am the person I am today because of what I've gone through. Um, sometimes when you find yourself reverting back into those tendencies, it's also great to kind of remember, hey, 
maybe this wasn't our best highest self hey maybe we've been through this before and we can see the red flags before we continue on um but to completely kill that person off that you were and to remove them you are not going to be able to have those constant remembrances and those red flags or green flags possibly pop up so then you can do better in the future so i don't think you necessarily need to kill your old self i feel like that's such like a popular term kill your old selves move on but it's like if you kill every version of yourself that you have inhibited in the past in order to become a new person what are you gonna know you're gonna know nothing you're gonna forget all the lessons you've learned you're gonna lose all the good memories you had and the bad ones you're going to inhibit qualities that you've already overgrown and overcame so i hate the idea of having to just like kill off your old selves if your old selves are valid it's also valid to step into a new self but carrying them with you keeps you on track to becoming a better version of yourself um, every single day i wake up and i look in the mirror and i see 12 year old hannah i see 16 year old hannah i see 20 year old hannah and i blow them a little kiss and i thank you i thank them for everything that they did for me and everything they went through in order for me to be where I am now. Um, and they went through a lot. They went through too much. Um, but they came out the other side and they did so, so I could be who I am today, which is so amazing and so beautiful and so talented and so lovely. And I love myself. Shout out. But this idea they have to kill all your old selves off. You don't. I think carrying them with you will make you stronger. I wanted to ask your advice on something kind of crazy that happened. So I tell live me, with me. a guy roommate and he's like one of my best friends and whatever. We hang out a lot. It's fine. The other day we were hanging out and he basically was like, oh, I hope I'm not reading this wrong, but like, can I kiss you? And in my mind, I was like, oh, no. Oh no, what do I do? I can't, I couldn't. And I feel so bad, but I couldn't. Like, I live with him and, like, I just don't vibe like that with him, I guess. So now we live together and I don't know what to do. Um, so, any advice on how to not make it awkward? Thank you. I love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, men love reading too much into stuff. Um, especially when it's like, dude, we're living together. No, I don't have a crush on you. This happened to one of my friends, but it was two girls. Um, and she just like read the vibes wrong. She's like, well, you live next to me and you know, um, we spend a lot of drunk nights hanging out together. We must be in love. And my friend's like, no, you're just my roommate and we have a good time together. So a love that he asked. Okay. A lot of men just like make a move and it's like, no not hot like ask can i kiss you my boyfriend did that when we were first like hanging out together he's like can i kiss you and i was like you can do whatever you want to me quite frankly but in this situation i'm glad he asked so then it wasn't like an awkward thing you had to get over um although this is a little awkward it would be more awkward if you guys if he just like randomly kissed you Ugh. um so at least he asked a b obviously he is reading too much into it but you told him you're like no this is not the vibe so sorry it's gonna be a little uncomfortable but i think the less you pretend it's awkward the better it's gonna be for both both of you both of you kind of just have to like forget it and just move forward because i guarantee like that's kind of what men do if they get rejected or they just like are like oh no she didn't want to kiss me or Meh, i'm just wasn't feeling that they just keep moving on with their lives they i don't think they really think too much about it i don't think he's gonna like harbor resentment any sort of way and if he does he's a weirdo freak um <laughs> I don't I he sounds respectful so I don't think he's gonna like harbor resentment or anything obviously he was looking too far into it the best thing that you can do to make the situation less awkward is just to pretend it never happened pretend it never happened keep doing your thing keep being a good roommate um maybe go hang out with your friends a little bit more than your uh roommate but the best thing you can do in that situation especially like an awkward roommate situation is just like you know we handled it I'm not going to kiss you. I'm not into you. Let's move forward. Forget it ever happened. And you kind of playing into that and making sure, you know, you don't, you aren't too upset by it um, will help the situation. But if you are like scared to come out of your room now, he's going to feel really weird and awkward about it. And you know what? 
he you know put himself out there sometimes you gotta do so obviously he was reading too far into it he asked you said no valid uh, say no he's just a roommate you don't have to kiss him you don't feel like it also even if you did i really recommend not don't get involved with your roommates you're gonna lose your house um <laughs> like quite frankly um but yeah like just pretend it never happened keep going on with your life the best thing to do in any sort of awkward situation where everybody like you know you're in the awkward situation and like the room goes quiet and everybody just looks around like the best thing to do is either like have a laugh about it or pretend it never happened and keep moving forward always Ooh, valentine's day ideas what to do um i don't know if you're single or if you are in a relationship but i'll give an answer for um either way first of all if you're single what have i done in the past when i have not been in a relationship oh one time in high school for valentine's day we found out that at hooters if you shred a picture of your ex they'll give you like 12 free wings um i didn't have an ex at that point because i didn't date anybody or have any sort of sex or any sort of personal relationship with men because i was so in i was on so many medications i could barely think <laughs> probably for the best um <clears throat> but i didn't have an ex so i found a random man a picture of a random man online printed it out and all of my friends we all went to hooters and we shredded these pictures they actually had exes so they shredded those pictures and then we just had hot waitresses and ate our wings and lived our best lives and smoked weed in the parking lot and honestly sometimes what's better than that i also saw someone on tiktok who was single and at the bars and pro tip you know those cheesy kids valentine's day cards where you like fill out fill them out you know elementary school you hand out the little cute you get the 24 pack of the valentine's maybe it comes with a sucker maybe it's just like a cute sticker whatever and you just put your friend's name on it and then your name buy those put your number on it and your name and then hand out little valentine's day um cute little cards at the bar if you're single i feel like that would be so fun if you were single like cute little like little sucker in a valentine's day little phone number i thought that was so smart and i had to write it down because i need some of my single girls out there to go practice that um in relationships i've had a lot of bad valentine's days a lot of bad valentine's days now that is mostly because I was with in a relationship with a narcissistic, toxic man who made everything about him and put me down constantly. And I should have known and left that man as soon as possible. But listen, sometimes you get trapped. You get sucked in and trapped. And I spent a lot of bad Valentine's Days with him. If you're having a bad Valentine's Day with your partner and you guys can't work together to make it better, I don't think it's a good relationship. Um... I've had bad Valentine's Days in the past and I knew the relationship wasn't good because literally we were on separate sides of a bed in a hotel room sobbing back to back and no one said anything and then we just woke up and pretended like it never happened. That is not healthy. That is not healthy whatsoever. Now, in my current relationship, we had the start to a bad Valentine's Day because I was just hangry and losing my mind and I started crying outside the restaurant over nothing. Like, it was not his fault. He didn't really upset me. I think I was just hungry and just started losing my mind. Um, and then he's like, okay, well, we still have a reservation so we can go in. And I was like, I can't go in because now my eyes are puffy and red and everybody in this restaurant's going to know I've been crying. And he's like, that's okay. Let's figure it out. Like, we'll, we'll make this a good time. You know where we ended up? At the casino. We ended up at the casino. We ate like a cheap ass chicken sandwich, took out like $100 and just like went gambling and had drinks at the casino. Talk about a good relationship you took a bad time and made it into a good thing because you wanted it to work out you see the difference here but um i think the less emphasis you put on valentine's day the better of course love 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 share love enjoy love show love celebrate uplift your partner necessary but also like i work every valentine's day your girl's got money to make. What am I supposed to say? You know, like, I'm a server bartender. The best time to make money is on Valentine's Day. You know everybody's out. And if you try and go out on Valentine's Day, you're probably going to have a bad experience because, A, every restaurant is going to be booked to the max. Every bar is going to be absolutely filled because it's, like, the day for couples to go out. A, I don't want to deal with all that mess. We can celebrate like a week before or the day before or the day after. I don't care. Like as long as we have a time to celebrate and do something fun together, I'm happy. But on Valentine's Day, my ass is at work.
okay, I got shit to do. I also don't want to deal with the mess of how many people are out and about. Girl, let them handle it. I'm going to go out the day before where nobody's going out because they're going out the next day and I'm going to have a good time. So Valentine's Day plans this year. Um, A, I just like want a bunch of flowers. I told my boyfriend that like that's literally all I want don't really want anything else um i want to go have like a fat steak with him and then try out this new bar i've been dying to try out because i've been doing dry january um so i think we're gonna do that like the day before or the day after one of the two who knows um what i got him for valentine's day peyton if you're listening to this turn it off immediately do not ruin your own valentine's day what i got him for valentine's day and valentine's days in the past um one year I kept it simple, okay? Kind of like a first year dating, not, you know, serious, but not too serious. Don't want to spend a lot of money. Um, I got, I literally had him show up at my house and I was in like a big robe, like f- head to toe robe. And then we walked upstairs and I took the robe off and I was literally just in matching lingerie set and heels. And I handed him a disposable camera and I said, You can't touch me until this entire disposable camera is filled with pictures of me. And then I had them printed and I gave them to him. That was his Valentine's Day. Great. So fun. Fantastic gift. Another year, um, I pierced his ears and I wanted to get him like good earrings because he's always complained about losing earrings or like the cheap ones that make your ears... You know, it makes your ears like extra sensitive because you're allergic to the metal. So I went on eBay and I bought him like a vintage silver jewelry box and like two pairs of really nice sterling silver earrings that I thought he would like. Easy. Another year, (laughs) I uh, have also gifted him for various gifts. Like I think the best gift you can really give somebody for Valentine's Day is just something that they already enjoy and you know that they enjoy so he loves like glass blowing and creating glass art um and doing art in that sort of sense so i bought him like a few hours to his glass blowing class because it's super fucking expensive and i was like i'm gonna get you some glass to play with some artistic materials i'm gonna pay for the class so you can go enjoy your own time and enjoy your hobby and that's me uplifting and supporting you through that valentine's days in the past oh i didn't get this jelly cat but I've gotten a jelly cat. I got my first jelly cat for Valentine's Day last year. He's my avocado. He's so sweet. Um, that really was a way of my partner showing me that they love and care for me. And although I have like silly little hobbies, they still want to support me and uplift me. And also like uplift my inner child, which I appreciated more than anything. Um, he actually flew with it. Oh, we were in Seattle last year. And he flew with it in a box of chocolates. And I had no idea. I was like, why did they go through all of our luggage? And I was like, oh, because you have a full wrapped present in the bottom. And they were probably like, what the fuck is this? But anyways, you don't have to make Valentine's Day too serious. Like, the the less you expect, like, of course, have expectations of just, like, enjoying the day together and showing love. Like, your partner needs to show you love. But the less you expect, the more fun you're going to have, um, quite frankly. So just keep the vibes chill keep it easy for both of you and I think you will have the most fun that way also try and come up with a plan like a week before so you're not last minute day of trying to get into a restaurant and then me having a mental breakdown outside of the restaurant because I'm hungry and we can't get in because it's Valentine's Day it's so fucking busy so make sure you plan talk about it act accordingly show love to your partners get creative oh I didn't tell you what I did this year I totally got distracted. I'm sorry. The cold meds are really kicking in. Talk about a sleepy girl mocktail. Sleepy girl mocktail. Shot of cold medicine. Oh, joking, joking, YouTube. Shot of this. And I'm good. I'm out like a light. Um, I am getting him this year. A, I got him a wallet because his is fucking tattered and destroyed. And I found one at a thrift store. Easy. Not that deep. I wanted to get a little bit more creative with it. And I've been thinking about this idea for years. And so I was like, let's finally execute it. Peyton, if you're listening, once again, close your ears, plug them, skip. I, he doesn't listen to this podcast, let's be real. Um, but he skates. So I had a skateboard made. I took some sexy photos mm-mm-mm, and I put it on a skateboard. And I'm going to gift him the skateboard of just hot photos of me, like a giant hot photo of me across the skateboard so we can hang it up. Because honestly, 
what's a better present than me? You know, you know. So yeah, really all I want for Valentine's Day is a fat steak and I want to wear a cute dress. Is that too much to ask? Maybe receive some flowers. Very simple this year. Mostly I'm focused on getting through work and making as much money as I can. Okay. What are the best ways to break the ice on the first date? Girl, I just overshare. You want to relate to somebody. You want to see if the connection's there. I'll just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk until someone stops and tells me I'm pretty and kisses me. That's exactly how me and my boyfriend first got together. Um, I was just like, overshare, overshare, overshare. And then he was like, and kiss me. Um, so honestly, like even in non-romantic relationships to make other people feel, feel comfortable, I'll overshare. Not to the extent where I'm like, oh God, what the fuck did I just do? Overshare isn't just like, chit chat you know i'll talk i'll talk more if i need to um but i think the best way to make somebody feel comfortable is just to humanize both of you like hey i've been through some weird stuff you've been through some weird stuff i'm gonna say some weird things you're probably gonna say some weird things let's just get comfortable with it you know let's overshare let's complain let's have a good time that's the best way to really break the ice on the first day or just connect if you're trying to connect quickly iced matcha recipes right now i'm sipping on some coffee but i did come up with the uh beautiful wonderful thing that is the swamp water i know you're like girl what the fuck maybe i'll make one next time i do a video episode i'll make a swamp water for you guys to see um i um usually take just a shot of espresso i'll chill it first so it doesn't get all watery and gross shot of espresso keep it on the side chill it you'll make your ice matcha oat milk honey brown sugar matcha not matcha powder make your matcha little concoction first pour it over the melted honey brown sugar in the latte add some ice pour your espresso shot on top it's gonna look cute at first because it's all layered and then you're gonna mix it all together and it's gonna look like gross muddy swamp water and honestly it's fantastic talk about low anxiety but enough energy to get through the day it's exactly what you need now don't ask a barista for a swamp water because she's gonna give you dish water she will not know what that is um please do not ask your <laughs> unless they're a podcast fan then they'll get it okay but most braces are not gonna know what the fuck a swamp water is and they're gonna look like you're look at you like you're crazy um ask for a matcha latte with a shot of espresso over the top okay and then things will be good oh my god speaking of nowadays someone said any nowadays cocktail recipes you like i just got a bottle in the mail oh my god i love it thank you for i don't know if you use my code but shout out um so if you want to include like alcohol with it i would recommend just doing a simple french 75 french 75 is always my go-to drink no more lemon drops no more lemon drops order a french 75 traditionally it comes with gin i'm more of a vodka girly so ask for a french 75 with vodka instead but it is literally just um usually gin saint germain lemon simple syrup shake it on ice top it with champagne little fruity little sweet little bubbly fantastic now i don't think you need alcohol if you're doing a nowadays cocktail and i you will not need any sweetener but i think if you take two ounces of this maybe a little bit of sweetener like not even a fourth of an ounce like a splash of sweetener simple syrup splash of lemon shake it on ice put it in a up glass okay and then you can top it with champagne or sparkling water fantastic i will drink this on the rocks it tastes so good um literally sweet tart flavor you can shake this with some juice i would love to shake this with like some pineapple juice do a little margarita spin maybe rim the glass with some salt um i would love to do a spin on this where it's like maybe some pineapple juice maybe some guava juice maybe some just like puree like a pureed strawberry with this and shaken would be fantastic get crazy with it though um i don't think it really needs a lot so you can really do anything with it but love it great alternative for my babes who maybe need to chill on the drinking but love their weed let me tell you that oh i hate being sick i hate blowing my nose every two seconds i hate being stuffy <sighs> life was so good when life was normal i know universe this is you showing me that i need to give thanks for the little things every single day and i understand now and i see you please heal me please i'm begging someone said recommendations for a girly who has trouble feeding herself due to lack of time and energy um 
on the days where you know you have a little bit of energy um residual energy maybe a little bit of time for yourself maybe it's a sunday you know day off chill rest relax i don't know maybe you're in the service industry and it's like a wednesday or something who knows whatever day is best for you you're gonna sit down you're gonna find one meal one meal that you can have a hyper fixation on and eat over and over and over again and you're gonna just make like five of them and put them in your freezer it's that simple for me those are breakfast burritos okay make a how make a big patch a big batch of roasted potatoes maybe throw a little green onion in there maybe throw a little uh roasted pepper in with the onions oh fantastic roast some potatoes pepper if you're feeling crazy put them on a tortilla shell add some cheese make a big batch of eggs add some eggs wrap it up put it in saran wrap throw it in your freezer you can pull those out of the freezer at any time and heat them up for like two minutes and they're perfect 10 out of 10 recommend especially if you're a girl on the go you're busy breakfast burritos are the perfect thing or like a breakfast sandwich i love a breakfast sandwich do a little bagel egg and cheese mm. little garden urban veggie cream cheese I'm a slut for that garden herb and veggie cream cheese. Let's be real. Okay, since I'm so snotty, let's do a little water, water break real quick. Okay, let's do some call-ins. I love doing these. Shout out for all my call-in girlies. I love hearing your voice. You all sound so hot. Anyways, let's get into it. Anna, um, big fan of the podcast. I love you so much. From Arizona. Woo! But, um... So I'm in a bit of a funk right now. Um, I'm just getting over having the flu. And me too. While I was sick, um, my boyfriend of like almost three years called me and broke up with me over the phone. And like the relationship wasn't great. I knew it wasn't. But for some reason, I couldn't leave. So like I, I was sad. But now I'm not sad. But I'm also not happy. I'm like in this word in between. And I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. Like. Like, I want to do things for myself and, like, you know, focus on myself. But I don't know what to do exactly, if that makes any sense. But, um, yeah. Anyway, love the podcast. Um, bye. <laughs> oh, hi, cutie. Sounds like, you know, your body's just purging everything. Illness, toxic ex-boyfriend. It sucks when, like, <clears throat> you go through a breakup and you're like, I didn't really want to break up, but also I knew it wasn't the best relationship, and now I just, like, don't really know what to do. Um, but, yeah, I think it just sounds like you're purging all the negativity in your life, and round of applause. Congrats for you. <clears throat> it sucks also because you're like, I got broken up with, but also, eh, you know? Like, I'm kind of hurt, but also needed to happen, and now I'm just, like, confused and I'm sick, and I'm not feeling good, and it's just like a whole kind of spiral. So I think what you need right now is just a little self-care, a little self-love. Um, take a hot fucking bath. Throw a little CBD bath bomb in there. Have a little drink, you know. Chill out. Like, rest, relax, recover. That would be my... Um, advice post sickness and post breakup like just chill the fuck out spend some you time um and some very needed long-term self-care time um indulge a little bit like eat your favorite food um just uplift yourself in your favorite way i love to just like have a girl's day where it's like i'm gonna wake up I'm going to smoke a joint. I'm going to go thrifting by myself. Maybe like FaceTime a friend or bring a friend along while I'm doing it. Um, I'm going to have some like go out and get my favorite coffee. I'm going to go home and smoke some more. I'm going to chill and like scroll on TikTok or like watch my favorite movie and TV show. Um, then I'm going to like take a hot bath and order my favorite takeout food. Pick it up in my fucking robe from my front door. Smoke some more, do a face mask, turn on my favorite music, dance around, like put on some fun makeup, see if anybody wants to go out if you're feeling healthy and good enough. But it's like really take the time to self care and indulge. It doesn't sound like you're really missing out on anything. Sounds like you, you know, needed to break up. Sometimes it's nice when someone else rips the band aid off, but just because someone else is ripping it off doesn't mean it doesn't still hurt. So valid in that, 
but also understand you're purging right now. Your body's purging all that illness and sickness. So allow it to do so. And the best way to heal from any sort of sickness or to get through the purging effects, the best way is to really just show yourself some love and some self-care. So dare I say have fun? Like right now, I'm so fucking sick. I'm just like same routine every day, chill, watch some TV, play my favorite music, take a hot bath, eat some good food. What's better than that? Maybe book yourself like a little spa day once you're feeling good. Um, maybe just like, like I love the sauna. I love the sauna. I don't know. I'm kind of crazy. Maybe just like book yourself a sauna day. Book yourself like a 60 minute massage or like a facial once you're feeling better. The sauna right now would be perfect because it's like hot and it would get all my nastiness out of my nose. Ugh. Getting the motivation to climb out of your depression era. Um, well, you can go lower, so you have no choice but to go higher. That was how I was when I was at my lowest. Literally, I bl- I blinked and all of a sudden I was in the psych ward and I was like, okay. And when you get there, when you get to the psych ward, you realize you're not that crazy because there's bitches seeing things in the walls. Okay, which valid. Get the help you need. Glad you're here. Glad we're solving that issue. There's been just stabbing each other in the hallway. You're like, wait a minute. We got to work our way up. (laughs) Like, holy shit. We cannot get lower than this, babe. The walls are yellow. Let's be real. Let's let's work our way up. So first of all, I can't get lower. Good news. Good news there. Um, And it sounds like you are recognizing that you're at a low point, which is you got to recognize when you're there. But once you recognize when you're there, that is a great sign because it means you know where you are. You're not enjoying it. In turn, you're going to probably use that energy to work your way out. First of all, I think the best way to really start with your mental health is to start with what's going on around you. Um, I'm talking making sure your body's taken care of, making sure your house is taken care of, little things like that. Let's take a shower. Let's brush our hair let's brush our teeth okay little things like that by showing yourself love in that sort of way making your bed washing your sheets by showing yourself love in that sort of way and taking care of yourself in that sort of way it will translate and kind of make it easier for you to then start taking care of yourself mentally because mentally that's going to be the hard job but physically that's something easy you can do I don't care if you're checked out on life I don't care if you you know can't think too much thinking is going on you can mindlessly get in the shower. Start there. You can mindlessly brush your teeth. You can mindlessly change your sheets. Simple things to start to show your brain that, okay, we're getting the wheels turning. Next hard step is going to be taking care of your mental health. Now, if you feel like you're at a low point where you do need help, ask for help, okay? It is the best thing I ever did for myself was asking for help, seeking professional help, seeking somebody who understood me more than I understood myself so then I could understand my thought process a little bit better. Um, If you need help, start there. But the best thing you can do starting at home, especially when it comes to mental health, is just be kind to yourself. When you recognize those thoughts and patterns of uh, self-negative talk, stop yourself. It is a <clears throat> active decision that you're constantly going to have to be like like a babysitter watching yourself. So as soon as you start going down that path of like, oh, I'm weird and I'm gross and I'm ugly, you got to cut that shit out. Nope. We are not talking about ourselves that way. Let's redirect. Let's give ourselves three ways that we can... Um, you know, compliment ourselves. This is a great uh, journal prompt entry. This was actually our Sunday. This was our Sunday journal prompts for last week. Sorry, there were no journal prompts on the Patreon. This week, I was so fucking sick, literally like in a just like so sick. Um, But our journal prompts for last week were um, I wanted to focus on self-esteem. Crazy, right? So I This was the most challenging thing, but I, the first prompt was what are 10 or more things that you like about yourself? It's hard to get to 10. It's hard. I'm in a good place and it's kind of hard to get to 10. Great journal prompt. If you are having a hard time redirecting those thoughts, 
or coming up with ways to compliment yourself. Challenge yourself, okay? Redirect those thoughts. Watch yourself. Don't let yourself off easy. Um, I know you're not letting yourself off easy because you got depression. I know you're thinking too hard about yourself, but don't let yourself off easy in a way that is going to better the way you think about yourself and better the way your brain treats yourself, okay? You are not a victim to your thoughts. You are not a victim to your emotions. You can work with them, understand them, and in turn, make them better. Um, it, re- it really is all about... <clears throat> the effort and the energy that you can put into it but to kind of get the ball rolling um in order to garner that sort of effort and be able to input that sort of effort i really really recommend starting with the physical showing yourself physical love so then it's a little easy to show yourself love mentally stop thinking i know you're like that is way easier than said than done hannah like let's be real what do you mean stop thinking my brain's going 100 miles a minute but when you are overthinking and when you are in the active habit of letting your thoughts control you every single second of the day, um, it keeps you from acting and it keeps you from feeling and it keeps you from moving on. Um, so when you are a victim to your mind and you allow your thoughts to control every single aspect of yourself, and I know this, I've been there. I have been in the depths of hell where it's just like, I am a victim of my mind. My brain can't stop. I was not allowing myself to work through those emotions. I was just feeling them and becoming overwhelmed and then just becoming a victim to them and allowing them to take over my mind, take over my body and my soul. But when you are allowing that, it keeps you from acting on the things that you need to act on, from feeling the things that you need to feel and in turn allowing you to move on. You have to, of course, you know, you're going to have these thoughts. You're going to have these emotions. So let's stop. Let's unpack that feeling. Is it based in reality? Is it a, you know, just like a thought that is just fleeting? Um, does it hold any power? What? Why am I feeling this? What is it leading me towards? What action can I take right now to better myself and to reduce that feeling? And what step can I take to move on in the future and to do better? Okay, when you're overthinking and it's just thought after thought after thought after thought after thought, you are not acting. You are not able to act. So sometimes you just got to take a deep breath, stop, let's unpack that thought. Why do I keep having it? What does it mean what action can I take in my real life to kind of reduce it or to make myself feel better? Um, and how can I move on accordingly? I believe in you. You've got this. I love you. Me and my friend found out on FaceTime if you do little little heart hands, it'll like make little hearts on the screen. It's so cute. I didn't realize I did that. Shout out Apple. Um, also, you have a hard time unpacking your feelings and you don't know where and you feel like you can't organize them in your brain. Get a journal get a journal you will love it It doesn't even have to be like a physical journal notes app anything i'm begging you okay talking about the austin mcbroom effect someone said can we talk about incompetent men and we talked about this a little bit last week but i want to unpack the tiktok trend um of people asking their like dumbass boyfriends to like open an orange for them to wipe ketchup off the counter and they're just sitting there looking like what what are you talking about or they're like, I don't want to do that. The bar is in hell. The bar is in absolute hell. What do you mean your boyfriend won't go get an orange from the fridge for you and open it? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Every single night, I'm in bed. I ask my boyfriend to do like nine things for me. Like, can you go get my charger out of the living room? Can you get, fill in my water bottle? Can you give me tissues? Can you rub my feet? Can you get on your knees and pray for me? And he it's done it's done he would do that for me because he loves me and he wants to make sure i'm feeling comfortable and uplifted and reassured and i would do the same thing for him that's what a healthy relationship is okay but these men who are unable to get a orange out of the fridge for their girlfriends they don't love them they don't and i understand Everybody has different love languages, but if you are unable to do very basic things for your partner, basic, basic. I'm not asking you to go buy me a $4,000 Louis Vuitton purse. 
basic things. If they're not unable to do basic things for you, why the fuck do you think they're going to do the hard things for you? You really think that's a man that's going to help you in a hard time? You really think that's a man that's going to show up for you when you are going through it? No, he can't even open a fucking orange. Okay? So, like, recognize and realize this and don't allow them to stay around. All of these women who are making these videos who are like, oh, oh, he's just silly. Like, he can't clean up after himself. Or, like, he doesn't like doing things for me. I am in my prison shaking the bars. Like, let her out. Let her set her free, please. I'm begging. Oh my God, nothing fills me with more rage than seeing these women stuck in these mid horrible relationships and being like, well, he's just quirky and I love him for that. Girl, he don't love you. He do not. And I'm so sorry. Okay, maybe a few more questions and then I got to go. Tips for cleaning out your closet plus reselling your clothes, also finding your style. Um, so I just did a huge closet clean out. I was so sick and I was like, listen, I'm sick. It's been three days. That was like Sunday and I had Sunday or no, no, no. That was like Monday. Yesterday? No. Oh my God. What day is it? What's going on? This is what happens when I get sick. Literally mind a mess. Don't know what day it is. I've been sick for like seven days now. Um, but one of those days I was like, I was like three days in and I was just over it. I was like, we got to do something here and I'm not leaving. I don't want to go out there. I'm scared of the world. I need my tissues next to me and I need to be in a comfy robe. So what can I do? Clean out my closet. I am such a clothes hoarder. I am. I love thrifting and we don't have any, um, like you can't try on clothes in the thrift store we don't have any dressing rooms um and also like if you try them on they will kind of yell at you um so i just if i like something and i think it'll be good i don't try and over purchase but i will buy it and i'll bring it home and i'll try it on and half the time those things don't fit they do not fit so now, then they were just sitting in my closet taking up space i was like you know what we need to go through this and we need to just start emptying it out uploading it on depop and selling it depop fantastic app for selling clothes um if you have never sold clothes before or you know you just want to start i feel like depop gives everybody a pretty fair um chance at making sure they're seen and making sure that their clothes are you know looked at and have an opportunity to be purchased so if you want to sell clothes sell them on there um, i'm doing a huge closet clean out my depop is linked in my instagram bio but it is also, let me find just the at so you can find it. So you can shop my closet. Um, it is smoke says shoddy with two Y's on the end. Um, but I have just been uploading clothes nonstop on there. Um, because it's like, if I'm not going to love it. And the hard thing is, I'll go through my closet. And I'm like, I've never worn this, but I might. Girl, you haven't. It's been in there for two years. You're not going to wear that. Let's be real. If you're not wearing it twice a week, it just simply is taking up space and not worth it. So ask yourself in reality am I gonna wear this and if the answer is like mm, not really but I'm having a hard time letting go of it look at it like this every item every piece of clothing deserves to be loved and honored and uplifted and if you can't show that love to that piece of clothing someone else deserves to have that opportunity which is why the thrift store is a great place but also reselling is a great opportunity um just like if you you know, you purchased that clothes, you wanted to love it, it didn't work out, give it an opportunity to still be loved and to still be uplifted and to maybe give it a new, new refreshed life. Give somebody else that opportunity. Great euphemism for relationships as well. Um, but that is what really kind of makes me able to release my clothes a little bit more because I get like personally attached to my clothing. Weird and my items. I'm like a hoarder. But at least my items are pretty. Um, but yeah, they deserve to live a well-loved life. So every time I package up a little piece of clothing and I send it off to one of you guys or whoever bought it, I'm like, ah, oh, it's going to a new home. It's going to live a new life. It's going to be loved there and loved in a way that I just simply can't love it. And that's okay. Um, but you gotta be real with yourself when you're cleaning out those clothes. Don't hold on to it for a rainy day. If you've never touched it and put it on, get rid of it. Get rid of it. <clears throat> also, speaking of Depop, it's a great way to find very unique pieces of clothing um, that you can then de develop a personal style around. Um, I love that you can make offers too because a lot of the times 
Depop sellers will price things really, really high, but they're willing to negotiate. They're willing to like make a deal to work it out. So always, you know, maybe DM them, be like, hey, will you take this much? You'd be surprised what they'll accept. Someone said nail appointment tomorrow. My nail tech is my therapist, LOL. Me as fuck. I love my nail tech. If you're in Kansas City, nails by Meg So. She is the best, the best. I'm talking, we're going on five weeks here and I haven't lost one gem. I don't know if you can see. I haven't lost one gem, no cracks, no lifting. These bad boys are one. I even pushed back our other appointment. I was supposed to go in on uh, the first. Oh, today, Thursday. Anyways, <laughs> I was supposed to go in on Thursday. And I was like, listen, I think I got another week in these. Let's push it back. I want to get my Valentine's Day nails and I have no idea what I want. Um, but I love a good nail tech because we go in there and we have a blast. And she pops off every single time. She does the best fucking nails. And I love it because like I sometimes feel bad for asking for like complex things. But she's like, no, I love a challenge. Real artist right there. A real artist will love a challenge. Oh my god, I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. I can show you my new tattoo. Um, maybe. Oh my god, I don't know how to twist my arm so you guys can see it. Oh my god, you can see it. Isn't it so cute? It says, with love. Adorable. I love her. She killed it on this tattoo. And it's like, not bleeding. It's really beautiful. And I am just so excited to get some more tattoos now that I found a good shop and a fun person. Well, anyways, you guys, the end of my video got deleted, unfortunately. So sorry about that. But I wanted to say goodbye to you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Thank you for showing up, not only for me every week, but also for yourself. I have so much fun doing this podcast every week with you guys. Um, hanging out face to face with you a little bit. Um, every Thursday. But with that being said, I will see you all next week. If you want more content from me, feel free to join the Patreon. Love posting on there with all my girlies. Um, and remember to follow me on Instagram at Hannah Marlene to keep up with what I'm doing and to possibly have your question read on next week's episode. But have a great rest of your week and I will see you all so very soon. Mwah!